live. And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land. And also say a quick hello to you, Rich, as you welcome the last hey. group of people. That's right. Welcome to those listening on YouTube. If uh, uh, No matter where you are listening to us at, Facebook, uh, Facebook, YouTube, or on wherever you download your podcast, make sure to like, like subscribe, comment, or rate. Rate, rate, or comment. Um, yep. If you do, we'll, we'll make sure to give you a shout out once we uh, once we see it. We have lots of shout outs today, Rich. We do. We we, we do. We have some discussion to have on that, but that's to come. Uh, we have uh, this week. We actually have a big show. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about. We have the Winter Olympics updates, uh, where we're at, what we've seen so far. Uh, we're also going to hit up the NASCAR corner, heading back into the NASCAR corner uh, just before we start the year. Rich, what else do we have? Uh, we'll be looking at the NFL, giving you a our predictions for the <clears throat> big game. The big game. Um, as well as kind of looking at the coaching hires as all the positions are now filled. And uh, some news coming out of the NFL with a team getting a new name and the NFL headed to another international city. Yep. Um, as well as looking at some quick hits that we keep pushing off for a week that are related to baseball. Yeah, we so have all that we actually more have a about, lot but to what's the time to do? We have a lot to talk about in baseball, but yeah. it's time to roll the intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay, folks, uh, poll question this week. Lots of responses to both poll questions that we had. Um, we're going to... We're going to talk about our food poll question now. We'll deal with the uh, sports poll question when it comes time to that at that section. How about that, Rich? That's okay. like a fair yeah, kind of plan works. to go through. That works. Um, but before we do that, Rich, how are you doing? We didn't even ask that at the beginning. Yeah, I'm doing good, Mike. Good. Good. Doing good. Work's going well. So, uh start training for the new job and working half days between the two departments uh, next week and Monday's an off day for me so yeah nice so I get get a little bit of a bye week before I gotta start doing two jobs so yeah two jobs at half days and two departments yeah Mike how are you how are you doing uh recovering surgery, from surgery, surgery ended up going okay yeah ended up having surgery Tuesday um they thought things were bad enough that I needed surgery no matter what, so got my surgery in, uh, and uh, doing well, uh, feeling all right, at least feeling enough to sit here and talk with you fine folks, and you as well, Rich, um, and uh, we're going to see uh, how it goes. Hopefully, I'm up for all of this, and uh, we can get back into the show. Uh, as we do, we're going to hit up this week's poll question, the last wild card of the uh, food poll uh, yeah. Chicken wings or, or pulled pork Rich Which one of these did you vote for? I know but you know I I, I think I went with pulled pork You I did actually correctly. go for pulled pork You did Okay. Um, which is I, what I, I vote so early I Right when I post the polls I don't always remember I voted pulled pork as well As uh, when you're okay. talking about tailgate food As I've said the entire time this is something I could eat at a tailgate. A little bit harder to keep warm. You got to have that that charcoal at a nice low level and put your pan on top and just let it sit there. But a lot easier to do than working with chicken wings, getting both your hands dirty, you just put it in a thing and you could keep playing bags while you're eating your sandwich, right? That's how I look at it. Um I don't know. I I still think either food's probably going to be because I I still think a pulled pork sandwich that's a two-hander. That's a two-handed sandwich to try and keep it together. I don't know if you could act, if you could eat it one-handed and keep your and keep yourself clean. Yeah, that's that is a hard one to do. But uh, yeah, um, good poll question this week. Uh, the people have voted. They voted for pulled pork. 
a nine to seven okay. victory. Pulled pork goes on to face our number one competitor, not this week, but in two weeks. Yes. This week's poll is gonna be burgers versus brats. The I think that's almost the ultimate in tailgate question. Do you want burgers or brats? Um Yeah. But with the high end like foods, burgers, brats, you can probably add in hot dogs, but they, they've yeah. been double eliminated, so we can't put them back. Yeah, so um, look for that poll question to go live later later today. Uh, and uh, our other poll question that's going to go live later today is going to be, what is your favorite Olympic sport? Uh, we broke it down into how the sports are divvied up in uh, the disciplines. So it's your favorite sport discipline. And yes, there are individual or favorite sports, and then there's disciplines underneath. So like half pipe is put under the same guys as reg as snowboard chase or whatever that's called. So there's mm -hmm. you get snowboarding, you get bobsledding. It doesn't matter if it's two or four man. You get luge, you get skeleton. Again, those are how, those are standard how those go. Uh, but it's how that plays out later in. Uh, how things go. So those are the two poll questions going to go live later okay. today. Look for those to go live. Speaking of which, Rich, uh, what have you been watching in the Olympics? Yeah, the Winter Olympics. I, I don't think I've been watching as much as I thought I would have. I don't know if it's just the just not interested in what USA Network or NBC is putting on. But what I have watched um I watched the Wingman's uh, Big Air competition. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Outside what looks like a, yeah, what odd venue choice is it looks like they're playing in the backdrop of a nuclear power plant. It's not. It is actually <laughs> but it's not a, a nuclear power it's plant. A steel, it's a steel plant, steel mill, uh, where they're making steel for probably the car that you're driving. Yeah. Interesting. It was, it was fun to watch, but also, I mean... I, I kind of had to catch myself because it was like there was a lot of those moments like ooh that that was a bad fall but you see him still you see the competitor still get up and get up be walking and smiling waving at it and the commentator's like well she was just trying to do a really she was trying to push herself with a move she hadn't had a chance had a chance to fully per perfect in landing competition before yeah but it, that's what you need to do to get those big scores is try something risky yeah i've been doing uh, a but, lot um, of curling who i think it was curling okay yep curling and then the sliding sports i love the sliding sports yeah i wish i would have watched more of the curling sports um hey they, the there is curling the, going the on that i've seen oh the sliding sports yeah yeah, the sliding sports, though, um, I think I've probably watched more highlight videos. Yeah. And by highlight videos, I mean the fails. Yeah. <laughs> the fails of them, uh, all the luge, all the luge people or even the skiing competitions of, uh, um, some of, of the, the wipeout. Some of the craziness that I've, that I've seen has been uh, the fact that there is a 360 degree turn in the, the sliding sports. So in bobsled, in luge, and in skeleton – there's actually a point where you make a 360 degree turn and then exit. Totally crazy to see. Mm. Um, they have a special camera that's like in the middle and it twists and drops all at the same time in order to uh, keep up with stuff. Really fun to watch. I highly recommend it. So uh, later today, like we said, go vote for your favorite Olympic sport in the poll question. Rich, do you see what's coming um, up? Man? How's the before we get there, Mike? How's Ooh. the medal count going? Medal count. You had the over under of thirty five. Forty five. What are the 45. medal counts out right now? Forty five. Uh, Forty five. Okay. Um, currently, the U.S. or the Germany is in first place for gold medals. This is gold medals mm -hmm. only. Uh, with eight, their overall medals. Uh, the Norway is number one with 17. Uh, number two is Austria. And number three is the Olympic or is the Russian Olympic Committee. Then, or, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Germany and Austria are tied at second. Then the Russian Olympic Committee. Okay. Then the U.S., Netherlands, Italy are all tied for 
fifth ish, sixth ish. So, um, do you still think they'll be able to get that get the forty five? Man, it's going to be tough. Uh, the good news is is that there's a lot of events in the second half of the like. So the Olympics start. The Olympics second half started yesterday. Um, it's a thirteen day thing, so it goes to the twentieth, uh, and we have events going on uh, leading up to it, and and so. The second half of things really is uh, where the U.S. is expected to kind of step up the game and to be able to okay. um, to win a lot of medals. Uh, speed skating, we do quite well in. A, um, we have some some good medalists for the snowboard stuff, and the um, our bobsled team should be all right. Not great, but the big the big thing is. Uh, m- women's um, women's curling, men's curling. Uh, I think they're doing a, a mixed curling. I don't know if they're doing mixed doubles or if they're just doing mi- uh, if they're doing if they're just doing mixed doubles or if they're doing mixed all around. So like a four person team, but but things like that uh, where we're expected to do quite well. Uh, figure skating uh, where we do quite well. Okay. All of those events uh, are coming up. Those are where where the U.S. is generally expected to uh, step up its game, and so we'll see. I, again, it's it's one of those things where that back half is where we generally do well, um, but you never know; it, anything could happen. Okay, I mean, I mainly went with the under because I think the Winter Olympics is a, there's a lot of. Um, well, the Nordic block parity across the Winter Olympic uh, against the, yeah the Nordic the Nordic countries yeah the Nordic block has really do well at the Winter Games has tons of great uh, competitors and so it's it'll be really interesting to see uh, how I mean they 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 do great uh, Germany Norway I, I put Germany in the Nordic block they technically aren't I understand I know my geography don't don't get me wrong people but that that. Your Northern European group um, always does really well, uh, and so it's it's hard because the U.S. doesn't uh, necessarily. I mean, the U.S. has like two, maybe three bobsled runs that you can practice. The yeah, European all out in either Colorado or Utah. There's one in Colorado, or there. I, I think there's one in there's one in Lake Placid. Yeah, yeah. Lake Placid, Colorado, and um, So there's like Utah. three. I think there's like it, three in the nation. Yeah. That's probably the same for any of the sledding ones. The luge luge training yeah, centers. Yeah, they all use the, the same they all use the same facilities. But but yet uh Germany has one to themselves. I think Austria has one to themselves. Um and I think I don't know if which which uh Nordic country has one, but they all share it. There's like Three or four, maybe even five in Europe. Uh, I think Turin still has theirs up, so that's another one that they that they have. Just all these ones in the in Europe that the European countries kind of share uh, and then compete against each other. So there's a lot there that they have a lot a lot of places to practice. So, um, and then there's sports like the biathlon that nobody really cares about here in the U.S. but uh, you you'll see huge turnout for in uh, Russian and and the Slavic countries and and even the uh, the Nordic countries love it too. So uh, I mean, and one of the sports is called Nordic Combined, where you have both uh, mm-hmm. jumping and I, I mean it's skiing stuff. So it's like it's called Nordic Combined. After the Nordic countries, what do you expect? They're great. That's what they are. So, um, yeah, we so you will keep reveal watching, uh, next. Keep watching the Olympics. Oh yeah, on the USA NBC Networks family of networks. Yep, USA and yeah, NBC, NBC family of networks. Uh, if you still have and, the uh, NBC Peacock. Sports app on Roku, uh, you can actually if you have a sign in for. Uh, that has USA Network. You can actually sign in and watch stuff still. Uh, otherwise, you got to watch on Peacock, which is behind a paywall. 
I can kind of help you get on some of that, Rich, if you need some help later. Nah, it's all good. Rich, do you see what's coming up? It's all good. So no, is it a left turn, Mike? It it is a left turn, and after that, it's another left turn because uh, we're heading into turn? the NASCAR corner presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Moline, Illinois. Check them all out for all your sports memorabilia needs, either in store or at their eBay store. Once again, that's Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. So, Rich, we had a NASCAR race this last week. Did you watch it? We did. Okay. I did. I, I think I watched more of the speed of the of the time trials more closely than i did the actual race itself the heat races instead uh, but, of... but i i i yeah. was yeah the heat races i was but i was tuned in from the first start race from the first heat race until the very end so okay. it was a great time i liked it um it felt I like a... say i was surprised i, I was kind of surprised with with at least once the full race started that they're that the racetrack stayed clean for the most part. There weren't too many wrecks with 21 cars on that small, small oval that they made inside the Coliseum. Yeah. The other thing so I, that... thought it, I thought they was, they did a nice job with it. Yeah. Uh, I think they did a great job as well. Um, I don't think they needed the musical interludes. I'm, I mean, they were kind of fun, uh, kind of a nice preview for this week's uh, Super Bowl uh, uh, music. But we'll get to that in a second. But more importantly, and and what we're talking about here today, um, with the co- clash of the Coliseum, it felt like a Saturday night at the dirt track. You got your heat races, you got your last chance qualifiers, and then you have your main race, your main A. And uh, man, it was awesome. Um, they did a great job with the racing side of things. I was not necessarily a huge fan of the musical side of things. I don't think it was necessary. You're still, I mean, I guess at that point, you're just trying to entertain the fans that are there. Uh, And they had a decent, decent uh, amount of people show up Mm -hmm. there. It looked like it was fairly well attended. Um, Hopefully uh, that helps them boost and get uh, more people this year into the NASCAR entertainment stuff. Uh, So let's give a quick recap of how our drivers did and how the race went last week, Rich. All right, so Joey Lugano was your race winner. Uh, my driver, your pick of Chase Elliott, came in 11th. Mike, your pick of Denny Hamlin, came in 23rd in the main race. Yeah, he uh, he wrecked out pretty early. Um, and then Chase Elliott looked like he was not going to have a good day and ended up pulling out an 11th out of that. Mm-mm. He Early on, he yeah, looked like I'll he was it, in some I trouble. Don't... Yeah, because I, I, I know I remember telling you, well, it doesn't look like Elliot's doing much better when you texted me. Well, you won this week Yep. with Denny Hamlin uh, exiting out pretty early in the race. Yeah, um, he, the first car out. with the musical breaks, yeah. Was he the first car out? I thought he I was. I think he was. I thought they had a couple other cars that were out first. I thought, but either way, he was made the, probably your first big, well-known driver. Um that had the bow out of the competition, though. Um, what were you saying about the inter- the the musical breaks? Yeah, but as far as like I guess the 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 breaks, I think you needed to have something there to entertain the fans and also pass the time during the TV broadcast when they were setting up from the going from the the heat races to the main event, and of course the 75 laps wasn't that also used as kind of like a, a way for them to do pit stops and refuels yeah at, they, at the halfway mark of the race they were doing some tire changes and stuff like that so it, it makes sense i'm not I, again i'm not upset at it at all i just it was you a, just would have rather seen artists that, that were more associated with nascar or that you enjoy watching actually personally i listening i to? actually prefer listening to the people that uh that that they had uh, there. I, okay. I actually prefer those guys over everybody else. Uh, actually, Denny Hamlin was the first out. Chase Briscoe was oh. the second. Tyler Reddick was third. And Ryan Pace was fourth off the track. So, Okay. Yeah, it was. So at least Denny Hamlin, in theory, could have gone back. Uh, he could have gotten in, in the rig and started heading back to Florida, at least. 
Yeah, he um, he ended so up Mike, staying and watching. That, it was great, but yeah. So the one thing that you brought up is with this being being complicated, putting a lot of strain on teams for having to go coast to coast to go back to Florida for the Daytona 500 and Speed Week. Do you think anybody will keep their cars out on the West Coast? Because after Daytona, they got to head right back across across the country to go out to the Auto Club f- Speedway in Fontana no. for race number two. No, no. none of them are going to do that because the, the cars that they brought to uh, the Clash, A, they don't count in their car count for the year. Okay. So they don't have to count those as their car count. Um, and B, the layout of the, the Clash and the layout of Fontana are completely different tracks. Okay, so the, it, it'd be better to take them back to the garage to get them set up for the next couple of races rather than keep that there and then work on it once you get back out to California. 100%. There's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just something I thought of because when I looked at the lineup and you were talking about cross country trips, as well, they're going to be going right back out to the West Coast for like three or four races after Daytona. Yeah, you would think, think that. They go to. They go to Fontana and they, they go, go to, to Fontana and Phoenix. I think, I think they do Phoenix and stuff like that. So it would sound like a great idea, but the problem is, is that uh, a there was some beating and banging, so you got some dents in the car that you got to fix up. But even more so, uh, just the cars themselves are completely different setups than what you would normally drive at a track like that. So uh, no, as much okay. as it sounds like a good idea, it doesn't actually work. All right. So, Mike, moving on. So, um, so because I my pick of Chase Elliott came in higher than Denny Hamlin, I will have first driver picks for next week's Daytona 500. Yep. Um, so we have do have some updates to provide on the fantasy NASCAR front. Yeah. As you can now, they have it set up for the 2022 season to where you can join a league, and I shared links on how you can join our league onto our Facebook platforms. Um, yeah, onto our Facebook platforms. So we might have to see if we can get that link for our, our YouTube channel as well as on the podcast feed as a hot link that you can join to uh, be more of a be a part of our show. I'm working um, on that right Because while we won't have... Okay. While we won't necessarily have prizes for weekly weekly finishes, you will get a you will get a shout out just like uh, Solomon and Tony do uh, week to week when you give when we give our the fantasy NASCAR recap as part of the NASCAR corner, as um, starting in two weeks with uh, when we after the Daytona 500 finishes. So you can join our league, and we'll kind of go over how the how to play the game new the rules how to set a lineup and changes for the 22 season next week yep i am putting that up here right here in the show notes uh you can now click the link it should be live and you, the link should be there and ready to go um don't forget to yeah, tweet that out there rich okay but anyway either way um pro tip download the nascar app Download the NASCAR app. Makes it changing your lineup week to week really easy, as well as it gives you an option to see live scoring of how your drivers are doing as the race is as the race is going on, as well as gives you an easy option to swap in your garage driver during the race. Uh, during the race, so you don't necessarily have to run down to your desktop computer to make lineup changes while the race is happening and miss out on a chance to swap out a guy that could have wrecked out or is doing really not doing as well uh, compared to your garage driver. But more on Fantasy NASCAR next week. If you do sign up um, this week, make sure to probably check uh, the Fantasy NASCAR app and set your lineup uh, probably on Wednesday or Thursday is when they'll probably open it up to where you can set your lineup. Yep. And tune in next week for our our NASCAR, our fantasy NASCAR um, kind of like tutorial, as well as our picks for the Daytona 500 next week. Yep. Uh, so the class, the Coliseum saw the debut of the next gen car, Mike. Yeah. Did you like so it? What are some of those biggest? Yeah, I kind of liked it. 
so what were your so some of so the things you, kind of some of the big changes so one of the biggest things that i noticed and this is because i've been watching nascar for 25 years or more um the numbers have moved forward on the door so they are they are more towards the front of the car um it opens i mean what it does is it opens up more space for more um more using the, that side panel as more of a spot for um uh, more sponsorship uh yes nascar guys are are plastered in sponsorship everywhere why because that's what pays for the cars it's an expensive sport to to participate in you have to have you got to get those cars paid for somehow throw in stickers for triple i sports cards incorporated or any of these things is what you have to do so that's kind of what they're doing uh they've upgraded the safety in the cars um they've made them so that uh they they have uh they have protected the drivers even more than they already were which They've done that quite a bit more. They've they've been doing that more and more throughout the recent years, um, and then they've da- they've actually um, they've lowered the engine or, or horsepower, but raised the uh, raised how the the downforce plays in a little bit, and uh, and and so it makes it so there's less downforce. Meaning that the car, even though the cars won't have the thousand horsepower that we've seen in the past, you're still going to see these cars at 670 horsepower trying to run around a track with significantly less downforce, meaning the drivers have to drive a whole lot better. Yeah, um, you're going to see only one lug nut, one center lug nut on the tires. Yep. That's an exciting thing. Um, it's a big safety thing. Uh, something that we're gonna, uh, you're gonna getting five lug nuts down correctly, and getting them equally tight, and getting them to not round off is a difficult thing to do, especially in the time frame they're looking at. Now with the new one lug lug nut, um. It puts equal pressure on the whole tire, making the tire safer to, and it helps it stay on the, the, the hub better. It also um, theoretically makes a little bit extra time, makes it go a little quicker, except these lug nuts take a little bit longer to tighten and to get to that exact specification that they're supposed to be at. <coughs> um, you're not going to see penalties for loose lug nuts and all that stuff anymore. That should be a thing of the past. Um, cause if you have a loose lug nut, your tire's not going to be on there. Right. And it's not going to work. So, yeah. So, um, the one thing that kind of catches my eye and you might have to educate me a little bit on this one is the team inventory of cars is now much more regulated as race teams will now be limited to seven cars per car number at a given time with the, with the to where and they won't be able to replace a car until it is used at least three races so before mike if a team was more heavily funded could they technically have access or they didn't have unlimited cars cars. i think they were in the course of the season yeah so they they were allowed to have up to i think it was 10 cars that they were allowed to have i don't remember exactly so don't quote me 100 percent on it but they were allowed to have more cars so you could specialize your car builds. Um, so your Daytona car, the only thing it was good for was Daytona. You brought it there once. You planned on wrecking it out. You planned on not having it the f- for the following whatever. But what this really does is it helps smaller teams. It sounds like, oh, well, you have seven of these million-dollar cars just lying around. No, these guys, I mean, this week... The cars are are in Daytona. By Wednesday, I guarantee you by Wednesday, all of these guys are going to have cars that are leaving the leaving their their locations, heading to the West Coast to go to Fontana. So that by 
Sunday the following week, they have a break, so they they might not leave Wednesday, but by by the middle uh, by the time the race starts for Daytona, they will have cars on their way out there. Those they'll have two cars at Daytona, and they'll have two cars in heading to Fontana. Well, you're already at four of your seven cars you're allowed per car number. It really it really adds up quick, and you're getting two cars prepped for the week after Fontana. So that's six cars right there. You have one extra car. That's really all you have is one extra car. Now, how does this help smaller smaller teams? It means that your bigger teams can't just throw cars together and have a liver have 12, 13 cars that they can rotate out every week and not really care. So uh, it'll be a good thing. It'll help the competition. Um, I don't know what it means for like test cars if they're allowed to have certain uh test cars that that don't necessarily m- have a number on them but we'll see i again i'm not sure uh that'll be something we'll have to get into okay. later um so there's that all right so that's the... go ahead i was going to say um let's do drivers teams and lineups and the 2022 tracks next week no, no drive. We'll do drivers next week. Yeah, because we're already at thirty minutes, and we got Super Bowl, and okay. and we need to hit those quick hits because there's a lot of those that we need to talk about. So, um, so fair enough. Let's do it. This right, has Mike. been the NASCAR Corner presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Check them out for all your me- sports memorabilia needs, either in person or at their eBay store. Let's head over to the gridiron, Rich. Uh, did you watch any of the Pro Bowl? No, 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 I didn't. Did anybody watch any of the Pro I Bowl? I was watching the. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think, I think so. The Pro Bowl would be one of those things. I think it's more there for fan. I think it would be fun, maybe fun to watch if I was actually there. Yeah. But I just don't know if it's made for TV. And when is it? When are they finally? When are they finally gonna admit that this is non-contact and it's for two hand t- and it's two hand touch only? Can we do that yet? Yeah, that was that was one of the main criticisms. It's almost like maybe everybody's playing with the quarterback red jersey on. Yeah, because you're not gonna see the hard hits. Nobody yeah. wants to get hurt at that exhibition game. That's why I'm almost wondering why why it isn't why isn't the Pro Bowl a just more of an honorary thing that you're being named to and there is an actual game that you do like the all nfl team or something like that yeah you don't necessarily play a game did because think about it mike when you have like injury replacements and everything did mac jones have the type of season that you would say he was an all pro or deserved to be at an all-star game like that no no but he was there because you needed a you needed the you needed a body to fill the roster out. Yeah. So he was there. So I, he went there. I just I don't like the that it's become what it has and will it will continue to be that, but we'll see. So the re, Rich, this week, uh you wanna do the poll question first or do you wanna do our answer first? Yeah. Let let's do the poll. Let's, so let's see this what week we, have we for polls asked you and give our shout outs. We have the NFL Super Bowl uh is tomorrow. On NBC, yeah. if you want to watch it, check it out. Uh, it is the Rams versus the Bengals. We put it up to you, fine folks, in our uh, in our fandom, uh, to and, and ask who do you think is going to win, the Rams or the Bengals? Um, it, this was a tight race, Rich. Six to five. Yeah. In favor of the Six Rams. Five, yeah. Um. So. All right. We have quite a few shout outs to give on this one. Um, do you have it up there or no? Do I need to read them all out? Yeah, yeah. I No, I, I can go. I'll give the first three. Uh, David Hyvinga said Rams 24, Bengals 21, and he gave the Super Bowl MVP to Matt Stafford. Makes sense. Normally a quarterback gets it. Uh, my brother-in-law, Josh Couture, said Joe Burrow is going to get the Super Bowl MVP because the Bengals are going to win 31 to 28. And uh, my old... Uh, boss out at the movie theater while i was in uh high school and college adam heath 
uh, who actually lives out in Arizona or California. I don't remember where, <laughs> which one he's at. Uh, said, let's go Rams, as he said, 35 to 28. He did not give a Super Bowl MVP. Mike, you want to give the other two? Greg Sagerson, my former boss at the airport, gave a uh, score of 28-24 to the Bengals, giving Joe Burrow the MVP. And finally, Mike Johan right. or Mark Johansson uh, said 21-17 Rams, Matt Stafford getting your MVP. Rich, who do you have? What is your score? And who is your MVP? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to go with the Bengals. Okay. Mostly because I, I think the right, I think this is going to be a good game. It could go either way. I, I just know that I had a lot of fun rooting for the Bengals against the Chiefs for whatever reason. You just like the chant. We did. You just like the chant. The chant. You want to give it to us? Yeah. Who day? The who day nation. Day. So. Yeah. So, I mean, but I, I think. If they can keep this game close, yeah. that's going to be their key to success because they have a great kicker who has just turned it Looks up. Looks like we're going to the NFC, or the, the, the AFC championship, folks. As he's walking on, as he's jogging onto the field with the with the backup quarterback and holder. Looks like we're he's going confident. to the Super Bowl. He's not afraid of the big game moment. And that, that, right now, the Bengals are hot. Joe Burrow yeah. isn't afraid of the spotlight. And for me, they're almost playing with house money. Nobody expected them to make it this far. 100%. They are a so, year ahead I mean, of what even, anybody thought. So if they lose, it isn't going to be like, well, they they disappointed. Yeah. No, they didn't necessarily disappoint anybody. They they were not expected to make it this far. So do you have so a score I, in mind? Score in mind? Mm, 28 24 and I'm going to give the Super Bowl MVP to Jamar Chase. I like that. That was wide receiver. If I was going to pick the bank now, so you put that I picked the Rams and I actually have not officially picked the Rams. You just put that because okay. our lunch bet officially yeah. you got to pick, you picked the Bengals. I am cheering for the Rams because I want free food, but I actually was going to pick the Rams as well. Um, and uh, I'm giving it to Matt Stafford. Okay. You're going to see a 31 to 24. All right. In favor so of the Rams. I think for the, so I think for the Bengals to win, they've got to keep the game close. Um, uh, if I was rooting for the Rams, I would say the, I would say that I would want to keep the pedal i would want to keep my foot on the gas and keep scoring points don't go conservative to let the other team back into the game 100 percent. you're a team that lives and dies off of the big play on big plays on pass on the passing plays like the cooper cup and odell beckham yep so if you get up big don't go conservative keep going you live on don't the arm of matt stafford plan. you live on the arm of matt stafford right now and that's yeah, that's what you have him. to do so, uh, other NFL Trust that he can carry your team to a Super Bowl. Uh, Rich, are you excited for the Super Bowl halftime show? Not really. It, I'm glad my baby is not old enough to realize um, how ghetto I really was in the 2000s era. Because I am super stoked for this. This is probably. The most excited I've been for a halftime show in a long time. Probably since okay. the Chili, Chili Peppers played. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Um, um, so. I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of the hip-hop. I think a lot of it's going to be like the radio versions of their classic oh, it's, hits. It's 100%. They, they haven't been, <laughs> they haven't come out with really... New uh, Eminem new has released material. a new album. I think it was yeah. last year. Eminem did. Okay. And Dr. Dre probably produced it. Snoop Dogg's always smoking weed with Martha Stewart. So he's always relevant. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, get it. Right now, you don't think of. Right now, you think of what's. If, I guess if you asked. How, who, how do you. Who do you associate Snoop Dogg with? 
and it's not necessarily for his music it's his prevalence for smoking and being smoking being high or his appearances with Martha Stewart on like a cooking show or or hosting dinner parties not yeah. necessarily with his music anymore no I totally agree I totally get it I, I totally get yeah, it. Yeah. But and Ice Cube is more of a you probably associate Ice Cube as an actor than more than a musician nowadays. We we saw Ice Cube do something in rap and my wife was like, I didn't know he was a rapper. I was a little <laughs> sad at the moment. But uh that's okay. Okay. Um other news in the NFL Washington football team has a nickname. Commander? They do. They are now going to be known as the Commanders. What do you think? Yep, that's exactly what everybody else thinks. Let's yeah, go back to the foot- I, I Washington don't... football team. Like, I think the football yeah, team was as good of a name as anything. Of... Yeah, already one of their former Hall of Fame players has asked that they pull his jersey. Wow. Hall of Famer John Riggins has asked that the key know that they no longer sell his name on the back of a commander's jersey yeah he said that i never played for the commanders i i don't want to be associated with this with this name yeah i think that he's in the under the impression that he didn't need to change the name of the franchise to the football team let alone the commanders so yeah. i don't i played for the washington redskins i don't the commanders, mind the so change from the redskins but I think the football team was great. I think everybody loved the football team. WFT, mate. Um, so in other yeah. news, um, Rich, you want to give us that the, second story? Yeah, the NFL is going to go to Germany starting yeah. in 2022. They're going to be going to Munich. Uh, Munich and playing in Next the. Next question, Archie. Is this your first meeting with Caesar? And yeah, Kurt? they're going to be going between Munich, Frankfurt, and Dusseldorf over the next three years. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I like it. There's a good following of football in Germany, so I, I'd like to see a permanent international game, maybe stage one or two in Germany. See how it goes. Why not do the Pro Bowl in Germany? Like. I liked the Pro Bowl. So, so, again, I'm sorry. I'm going back to this topic. But the, the Pro Bowl, when it was going to Hawaii, you got to bring your family. You got a destination event. You got to go to Hawaii. It gave incentive for players to actually go to this thing. Now that it's going to be traveling around and whatnot, why go? Who cares? Anyway. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of, I think there's a little bit of, I think that for the Pro Bowl to work or be relevant again or get it to where players actually want to go instead of looking for reasons to not go, put it at a destination where they want to go to. I yeah. mean, I think they tried it with like Orlando saying, all right, we'll do, we'll do events at, we'll incorporate Disney, Disney World into the into like to the skill competitions or the games before the big game and have it in camping world stadium i think that somewhat works for the guys with families but and and maybe las vegas and hawaii but anywhere else it's like all right i can go here anytime and we play regular season games here too yeah um this so this week's pro bowl was in vegas and a player got in trouble mike yeah sorry for not putting this on the outline alvin Kamara is being charged with assault as he and his crew as they were going up an elevator, a guy was trying to just minding his. I think he insulted somebody in his posse, calling him ugly or you're ugly. The his posse didn't like that, and Alvin Kamara punched him out to where he was knocked unconscious, and his crew also was was beaten on him. To where there's a chance that Alvin Kamara could face uh, federal char- um, charges in the state of Nevada. Man, that's that's a shame. Alvin Kamara's got some skills, and oh man, that, what a shame! You mean because mean he he was actually served with a warrant at the Pro Bowl. They came and got him at the Pro Bowl stadium to arrest him. I mean, you know where he's gonna be. Yeah. 
Wow. He was charged with bodily, charged with uh, battery resulting in substantial battery harm and posted bail on Monday. Man. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all. But I love that they're going to Germany. So Let's I mean, go to Germany. German fans yeah, are good. To have, all right, and finally, all right. NFL coach and GM updates, Mike. We finally so we got our last few our hi- hirings. Filled. Yeah, um, the last one being one of uh, one of my favorite coaches that the Bears have had in in the last twenty five years, at least. Lovey Smith, head coach of the Houston Texans. Do you like it or not? I don't like it. Okay. Uh, Given their choices of who they interviewed, who they gave as a second interview, I don't, I don't like it. But overall, I don't like the hire. But given who they gave as second interviews and who was listed as their final candidates, he was the he was the most appealing from a PR standpoint. You know what? I they think they weren't going to take a hit PR wise. I think Lovey Lovey Smith got a bad rap in Chicago. He had a good record in Chicago. With Overall, a yes, terrible he had team. a good record in Chicago. He had one of the worst teams we've had and we still made it to the Super Bowl. Yes, it was on the strength of a defense. And yes, we didn't look good in the Super Bowl. But we still had one of the best, like, we still had one of the best years we've had with a team with Rex Grossman as our head, as our, as our starting quarterback. Yeah, but, but for me, I look at it as, all right, what did he do after leaving Chicago? He went to Tampa Bay, finished eight and twenty-four. He went to the University of Illinois. Well, Did now, now, now well there, you can't. Nobody you, does well at Illinois. You can't Illinois. fault him for his University of Illinois because that's like saying you're going to go coach high school a high school football team, but you're only going to allowed to play college football teams. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't hold the, the the University of Illinois against him. And then as defensive coordinator of the Texans, his unit ranked thirty-one out of 32 yeah so if, if you look at time. maybe post super bowl chicago bears does that resume warrant getting a promotion from defensive coordinator to head coach from my perspective i think that if you're do you expect your team to win if this is if if you're houston do no. you expect your team to be a winning team I, I think I think they know that they're probably not going to be a winning team. Okay, so why so not? So they could have avoided the whole mess of uh, why did you fire David Culley, one of the few minority coaches in the league, for g- at least having the same record as the previous regime, and because nobody was knocking on the door saying they wanted to hire Lovey Smith as their defensive coordinator, so it wasn't like they had to promote him to keep him and they promoted the quarterback coach and pep hamilton the offensive coordinator which was going to be the type of position he was going to get if he went to another team yeah so they so to me they could have kept the same regime that they had in place and just given pep hamilton the promotion the offensive coordinator and kept david coley in place to see if he can either continue to maintain that four and twelve record or be better you know, I understand that. I just, I think that Lovey's a great guy. I think he deserves a hire at this position. I think, um, and you got to make this change. The team's not happy around David Cully. The, the, he had lost the locker room. Might as well let him go. All right. All right. So, Mike, so... Maybe let let's do like maybe like uh I know not everybody's watching us so some just listen to our show maybe a a thumbs up or thumbs down or maybe just a kind of like an incomplete. Okay. Let's just do pass fail incomplete for these hires, Mike. Okay, so we're gonna start um, off with we, we've talked about we. Go ahead. We're gonna start off with the we're gonna start off with the Denver Broncos. Okay. 
head coach Nathaniel Hackett up or down? Or I, I'm going to give him a pass. Whether whether they get Aaron Rodgers or not, I think this yeah. was a good hire. I'll give him a passing grade. No, I think this is a, a great hire. Um, it A, elevates your team's uh, likelihood to pull in Aaron Rodgers. Um, even if you don't, uh, it gives you a great mind at a head coach spot. That's a pass. Um, next, we're going to move on to uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Doug Peterson, head coach. Pass. Love it. Fail. Good hire for them. He's a former Super Bowl winner. I like I'm, I won't give him a fail. I'll give him a – it's too early to tell. Incomplete? I'll give him incomplete. Okay. Las Vegas Raiders. I think it's the right – Go ahead. You, you're talking about I'm, Jacksonville. I'm going to give it fail because – okay. You were, um, you were saying about Jacksonville. Jacksonville, I like it. Yeah, for Jacksonville, I like it. Um, Doug Peterson, he has a Super Bowl winning pedigree. He had good records in Philly before he got before he got let go with a power struggle between the front office or not agreeing with who he thought the quarterback should be moving forward. And um, so I think he's going to be a good quarterback for Trevor Lawrence's development. Okay. Hopefully they give him time. Las Vegas Raiders. Fail. I, I don't until I a agree. Bill Belichick coach does well outside of New England. The best I'm going to give somebody is incomplete because I thought the locker room with the players in the locker room was fully behind Rick Basacci getting the head coaching job that I thought the Raiders should have listened to their players and, and kept uh, Basacci as the head coach. I agree 100%. Plus, I don't trust Josh McDaniels uh, ever again. Uh, after what he did to Indy. So I just, I would never have hired that guy, no matter what. Miami Dolphins, Mike McDaniel, ha- hired as the head coach. Pass fail. Incomplete. Man, I, I'm going to go incomplete on this one. I want to see what he can do. I'm going to give him a, from Kyle Shanahan. I'm going to give him a pass. Um, It cleans up some controversy, hopefully. Also stirred up some controversy as well, all at the it same did. time. But uh, I think it's a guy that that has a good head on his shoulders, so look for him to do well. New Orleans Saints, Dennis Allen. Pass. Pass. I I like it. They're they're going for continuity there. They don't want to rock the boat too much. And if Dennis Allen doesn't work out in a couple of years, they can easily clear the slate once they know for sure Sean Payton's not going to come back, not going to come back to them. So yep. maybe in two to three years, if it, if the rebuild isn't going well or they've realized that it doesn't make sense to keep uh, rolling out the same veteran roster that was winning with Sean Payton as coach, they can easily let go of Dennis Allen and go with a clean slate. But I think right now with who is on their roster, they needed to go with an in-house candidate. New York Giants, Brian Dayball. Pass. That Fail. Was the, like the, I think that was the right hire for that team. Fail. Fail. Okay. Uh, Why do you say fail? Because uh, I don't think they should have fired Joe Judge. Okay. Minnesota Vikings, um, Kevin O'Connell, head coach. I'm going to let you go first on this one, Mike. I'm going to give him a in. I'm going to give him an incomplete. Actually. I yeah, think, I think I can go with the incomplete. My I think you needed says, a change. My, my gut says fail, but I, I think I, 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 can, I, I can agree with incomplete. I think you needed Most a change. Things, I, think, I just don't know if Kevin O'Connell is the right guy for the job. Uh, he He's done a decent job. Um, but, again, they can't finalize it until after the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, offensive coordinator out of, out of the Rams. Uh, has he really been the one making the calls, or is he under the Sean McVay umbrella, and uh, that's all he's hes just writing those coattails? Is that going to really be the right fit for him? He still gets an indifferent or an incomplete. Our yeah, second to incomplete. On my our second to last, Lovey Smith, Houston Texans. Given their other alternatives. 
I would say pass, but my but I still got to give it more of an incomplete. I'm giving it 100% a pass. Uh, good to see Lovey back at the head coaching position. And finally, your Chicago Bears, Matt Eberfurst, right. so let's look at this. head coach. Yeah, let's look at this from his entire staff. Okay. So he brings in Luke, uh, Luke Gutsy from Green Bay to be the offensive coordinator. Yeah. And hopefully they let him run the show since Eberfuse is more of a defensive guy. Yep. And he brings in Alan Williams. As defensive from, coordinator. As defensive coordinator. He used to be his linebackers coach in Indy with him. Yep. And he brings Richard Hightower over from San Francisco as the special teams coordinator. I love all of that. And actually, and Ryan Poles uh, is the one that's, that's made this all happen as GM. Um we're not getting into that conversation. I thought about it, but we're not getting into that conversation. Um, okay. We, I'm going to give it an incomplete. I want to oh. see what they can do with Justin Fields first. I, yeah. Uh, I think that Luke Getze is the best hire in the bunch. Personally, I think he can do great things there and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, I'm I'm on the I'm on the passing side of incomplete. Okay. Passing side of incomplete. And that's fair. So, so Eric Bianami is technically yeah. a free agent. Yeah. He can sign with somebody else. He doesn't necessarily have to go back to Kansas City. I'm surprised nobody he picked him up. Stay in Kansas City. Or should he go somewhere else? I think for his betterment, he needs to go somewhere else to prove that he it's not that it's him, that he has the skills and the ability to be the leader there that needs to happen. If he wants a head coaching position, that's what he needs to do. He needs to find, and I don't know who has an offensive coordinator position still available, but that's what you need to do. Maybe go, go out to San Francisco or does that put you under, yep. or does that put you under Kyle, uh, Shanahan and, and you're now running now you're just a guy that runs other people's offenses um, I'm not sure I don't I don't think there's a good spot for him to go um, but he needs to go somewhere else to get on, out from under the shadow and what a big shadow it is of Andy Reid mm -hmm. so yeah if I'm beyond me I got three calls that I'd want to make I'd want my agent to, to set up interviews with yep you mentioned one of them in San Francisco. How many former assistants yeah. has Kyle Shanahan turned into head coaches? Yep. Whether they're play callers or not. Sean McVay? Yep. Two guys have gotten head coaching jobs as his offensive coordinator, and you know that they're not the play callers. So 100%. There you go. Zach Taylor coaching against him in the Super Bowl. But is and, that going to uh, – Zach O'Connell getting the Minnesota job. Is that going to hurt you? Because you know that these guys aren't, aren't the – they they're not the play callers, and so you're going back to another position as Eric Bieniemy to get questioned whether you're actually the one making the difference in the offense. But now you've expanded what your possible playbook could be because you're not just relying on the concepts and terminologies that you learned under Andy Reid. Now you can now you can talk about what you've learned under Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan and how. This is because now having two offensive playbooks, this is what you're this is what you're gonna do. That's well that's kinda how it worked with Ron Rivera. He was a Bears defensive coordinator for so many years. He went over went out to Los Angeles and learned how to um learn a to totally new defensive um skill set as he as like he ran a three four a four three in Chicago and then went out to San Diego as a defensive coordinator and did a did a defense as a 3-4. Yeah. As a 3-4 base defense. We'll and see. the third team, the Patriots. Coach under Bill Belichick for a year. I think that's too many. I think all of – I like all of those places for him. I think he could do well at all of them. I think the problem, though, is, is that every one of those locations have too big of a guy at the head. Too big of a guy at the head. You need to go somewhere. Go work for Lovey Smith run that offense and make that offense into something great. Go out to Jacksonville. Go out to 
go out to to Miami, go to one of these places and show how good you can make an offense would probably be the best thing for me. Um, the problem is none of those places have the skills to do it. So it's a hundred percent relying on you, not your not your players really, and that's not what you can what you do as an offensive coordinator. Okay, yeah. um, Rich, we have some quick hits to get to that we've been putting off, so let's get them as quickly as possible. Uh, let's start off with uh, a quick update. Um, according to Rob Manfred, uh, the universal DH has been agreed upon. Uh, that's going to be in the new. Uh, collective bargaining thing that's going to be happening. Uh, we also know that the players and uh, the league are meeting today uh, to Ooh. to talk. Um, okay. We'll see if anything comes from that. Uh, they apparently gave raises and uh, did a couple other things on behalf of it. So um, and agreed to the universal DH. So that those are updates for this week. Um, we also had. Uh, we know that in Triple A, um, which league was it? Rich is the Robo Ump going to be calling everything? All of Triple A, from what oh. I understand. Yeah, all of Triple A. Do you like it? Not like it? You might as well test it at the highest level yeah. before you try and bring it to yeah uh, to the majors. Um, and then, uh, Rich, do you want to give us a rundown of? Actually, we're going to do this first. We're going to do J- Jeremy Giambi before we go into okay. that. That go way we it. don't end on a bad note like we used to do all the time. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to sit here and say, if you are having mental health issues, get help. This week we lost one of the great, one, uh, what I would ca- say a great player from our childhood. Uh, Jeremy Giambi, uh, brother of Jason Giambi, uh, took his own life this week. 41, 41, 42 years old, I think is what all he was. He was young. 47, Mike. 47. 47. Still, that's that's young. If you are struggling, I don't care. Reach out to me. You can find me on Facebook. I'm not that hard to find. I'm on all those posts on here. Reach out to me. I'll sit and listen with you. Um... And if you don't want to, if you don't want to spill your guts to me, um, you can call one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five, or text talk to seven four one seven four one. That's the National Suicide Prevention Lines. Um, man, it's sad to see this happen. It goes to show you that it it does. I mean, we've talked about in the past that it it doesn't just have to be somebody that seems like they they don't have anything. It can be guys that that appear to have everything. If you need somebody to talk to, you can reach out to us, or you can reach out to those two numbers. I will put them in our as in our uh, description as well, um, just because it's that important to to me at least. And I think Rich would agree it's important to him. Um, if you are struggling with thoughts of suicide or uh, any of anything like that, uh, just give these numbers a call. And uh, or or reach out to Rich and I, um, and and we'll do our best to 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 just be there for you. So, um, he uh, he played for the Athletics. Um, I, man, he, he, I thought he was a great player back in the day. Uh, his numbers don't show that he was that great, but still what a shame. So Rich, do you have anything to say on that? Not really. Uh, yeah, he, he was a good, he was, he was a good clubhouse guy. Oh yeah. Not necessarily a, a superstar all-star player, but he was a good clubhouse guy. Um, Featured in the movie uh, Moneyball as well yes. as yes. when they were trying to figure out a way to replace Jason Giambi, his offensive production. His yep. name was dropped in the famous uh, front office scene when they were trying to determine the production that they would need to replace his brother Jason when he signed with the Yankees. Yep. 
So, okay, Rich, on a lighter note, who made our class of 2022 MLB Hall of Fame? David Ortiz was the only member elected um, falling off of the ballot. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens. Yeah. Final year on the ballot. They did not make they did not make it. Uh, so Sammy Sosa also falls off the ballot as well. I actually have a big problem with the Roger Clemens one. Okay. Roger Clemens, the big argument there has never been anything to do with his uh with his on field play. It's his personality off the field. Ah, uh, you're getting your pictures mixed up, Mike. The the guy where they where the voters are getting Oh, I'm sorry, Kurt Schilling. You're maybe right. Political. You're right. Kurt, Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling. Yeah, you're right. Kurt Schilling. It was Kurt Schilling. Okay. So why was Clemens? Oh yeah, he was steroids. Uh, yeah, that's right. Clemens has steroids or performance enhancing drugs. Um, allegations. I, I would also argue Sammy Sosa and deserves to be in there. If, I mean, so here's what I think is going to happen with both Sosa and Bonds. Um, these two guys, you can't tell the story of baseball without them. They'll get a plaque, but they won't get a bust. I think that they'll eventually get elected, but it's going to come from the Veterans Committee. Like their peers putting them into the Hall of Fame. And probably the same thing with Clemens and Schilling as well. It's their peers considering their numbers, the players, the guys that they played with during their careers, putting them into the Hall of Fame since the voters chose not to. Yeah. We'll see what happens on that. Um... You know, all three were great players. and I, But personally, I just don't think that David Ortiz was a first ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, I agree. I don't think he had a he had a good enough resume to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, but you got to admit the guy is very likable. He's big personality. His I, I I mean I'm more considering him for his postseason performance his, rather than his regular season performance. And even beyond that, point, his post his post baseball career. What he's yeah, done since, since he's been a baseball player, since post player career has been way better than most of the guys out there. So, I'm actually okay with the with him getting elected that early. Um, it's just one of those things that that uh, comes up and and is uh, I you know I'm fine with it. So, um, anything else? Any other yeah. shout outs that you have before uh, I bring us down yet again? Um, I, no, I, I don't have any shout outs this week. Do you want to wish your wife a happy Valentine's day? Sure. <laughs> Always forget about Valentine's day. Cause we really, we don't really yeah. celebrate it that much. We're going to go out. We're going to try and go out. And, uh, I took Monday off, um, mainly because I thought I'd be coming up, up to Esterville like I did last year. Uh, so I took it off proactively, and it just so happened to be on Valentine's Day. So we're going to try and uh, just enjoy the day off together. We might go bowling okay. as, just to get out of the house and do something. Well, you're welcome. Uh, so happy Valentine's Day. You would have been welcome to come up. Uh, we we totally had, could have made it work, but I understand why not. Um, so this week I want to shout out to Solomon, and, uh, who participates in a lot of stuff with us. Uh, is a great member of the 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 family i would say here on balls and sticks uh he's been on the show to kind of talk nascar um him and his family have um are preparing to lose his mom and so we want to lift him up we love you um and we're here for you give us a call if you need anything um that whole family's been a part of my family for for many years so uh it'll be a sad day but we know that uh She's leaving suffering behind. So uh, on a lighter note, happy anniversary to my wife who hates Valentine's Day and uh, doesn't tells me if I buy her flowers, she's throwing them away. 
legitimately. <laughs> she will throw away flowers that I buy for her on Valentine's Day. So, um, no, so what if you bought the bronze flowers uh, made by our buddy um, Joe Ripple? Josh Ripple. Joe, Joe Ripple. Ripple. Um, she wouldn't throw them away. Honestly, she wouldn't throw any of them away, really. But what she would end up doing is she'd be mad at me about it, and she would not be happy. Uh, and we would likely, I mean, you know, I don't do it anyway, but uh, she legitimately doesn't like it to the point that she would be uh, a little upset. So, Rich, with all that being said, what's it time to do? Mike, I think it's time to roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. 